we're going to do an all signs reading for the full moon in Scorpio. Um, I just did one and I was feeling inspired to do another one um, using another deck. Um, so, let's see. What is the current energy of the viewer, right? Let's, let's really tap into who we are talking to. Pisces, Divine Feminine, Birthing and Fertility, uh, the Pentagram, Harmony, Protection and Idealism. So you could be the Divine Feminine out of your unit, right? Like every battery has a positive and negative charge. We've got, you know, the Feminine and masculine charge of every connection, right? Whether you're male, female, male, male, female, female, whatever. There's going to be um, a balancing act between like that, you know, left and right side of the brain. That's really what I use to identify the differences between um, masculine and feminine, right? Your masculine is going to be the more objective, you know, very organized, detailed business minded, you know, structured, um, whereas, you know, the divine feminine is a little bit more sporadic and a little bit more, um, you know, in touch with like the, the fluidity of like your intuition and your spirituality and, um, really feeling like, a like, that kind of artistic energy coming from the Divine Feminine, right? The Divine Feminine is typically pretty artistic. So, and uh, if, you know, like, I mean, usually the Divine Feminine is the first one awake to, to their calling or their connections. And, you know, it's like they know first. Um, the Divine Masculine is the one that catches up later, right? Because they're too busy being in their head and not in their hearts, whereas the Feminine is all in their heart. And, you know, I mean, they're in their head too, but it's different. You catch my drift. So. That Scorpio energy of the full moon too, right? Like Scorpio is represented by the death card in tarot, which represents like endings, completions of cycles, right? Um, rebirth energy is really what's popping up to me. Um, intuition. Somebody's really into their intuition right now. Somebody's really listening to their higher self in regards to what they want. So we've got the King of Pentacles in the upright, and we have the Queen of Pentacles in the reverse. We have Divine Counterparts. Um, you showed up as the Divine Feminine, right? So I would be reading it from this perspective, actually. Um, and, you know, put the energy where it belongs in your story. I could you know, be picking up more on the energy of who you're focusing on as well. So take it as it resonates. Um, Queen of Pentacles in reverse represents somebody who feels like something is lacking or like, yeah, it's like somebody who feels like something's lacking. Um, with the King of Pentacles, this is Kind of the opposite. Somebody who feels like very abundant, feels very taken care of, feels like nothing's lacking, right? Um, and 
Then we have the Four of Wands in reverse with the Seven of Swords. So somebody could have recently left a marriage here um, or a long-term relationship. Um, with the Seven of Swords, it's like there could have been lying, cheating, stealing. You know, there could have been some kind of like bullshit energy involved. Um, so let's see. All right, let's see. Tell me more about this story. Queen of Cups in reverse. Somebody had a change of heart in regards to a connection or a love interest. Like, so, there's this energy of, like, no longer uh, giving to something, right? The Queen of Pentacles is often holding on to something. So, with that being in reverse, it's the energy of letting go. Somebody could have left a marriage um, and felt like somebody, like, their spouse was not being honest or open or felt like they were maybe looking for other things. All right. Interesting. So we have the three of cups showing up. Um, Friends, debauchery, indulgence, these could be reasons that this connection could have faltered. Uh, Eight of Pentacles shows me a workaholic, somebody who's just always on the grind, right? Which would be that King of Pentacles energy, right? <clears throat> Very, like, on their shit. Three of Wands in, re in reverse tells me somebody walked away from a third party situation. So yeah, with the Seven of Swords, there was definitely like a third party situation. Uh, Five of Cups in reverse with the Three of Swords in reverse. Really tells me that um, somebody is getting over like the emotional disappointment or loss. Um, of a connection in the past, right? Somebody's really healing from that. With the Queen of Wands in reverse. Queen of Swords in reverse. Damn, every Queen in reverse. Okay, so you're dealing with like, uh, I want to say like a false twin flame. Um, you know, having all the Queens in the reverse is not necessarily a positive sign, right? That's like literally the opposite of the Empress. This is somebody who couldn't tap into their true nature or struggled to, right? This is somebody who struggles with honesty and communication. With the Queen of Swords in reverse, this is like also trying to like string you along, right? So you might actually be the masculine and kind of like focusing on feminine energies at this time. But what I'm really seeing here is, yeah, somebody was just really dishonest. Somebody was uh, incapable of, like, reciprocating love and affection in a certain way. Five of Wands in reverse, two of Pentacles, and the Fool card tells me that somebody was just kind of over the fight, right? Reminds me of the Alabama Shake song that I don't want to fight no more. I don't want to fight no more. That's what I'm saying. And so somebody made a decision because they're tired of the fight. They're tired of, you know, they're like, dude, I fucking work hard. I'm over here making all these Pentacles, trying to get shit done. And, you know, like, I don't really deserve all this drama, right? Because all the queens in the reverse is the ultimate drama queen, right? And who the fuck wants that? <laughs> um, yeah, there's definitely this energy. Like, and with the full card, it's like you had to take a leap of faith. It's kind of like you had to just kind of, like... 
jump off a cliff without a net and hope that, like, you didn't fall into some rocks, right? Um, and you didn't fall into rocks. Or if you did, you survived. <laughs> right? Uh, <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So there's like this energy of like really moving on from something that was pretty tumultuous. I'm a drama queen. There was like a soul tie though, right? This was a, not just any relationship. This was like a karmic, a karmic soulmate, right? So this is somebody that, like, you could add bad blood in a past life, right? Could have killed each other's families. Who knows, <laughs> right? But there was bad blood, and it's, like, having to come together in this life and having to, like, go through this, you know, which feels very energetically familiar, right? You're probably like, this is the same old shit. Um, yeah, it's very familiar, and you probably, like, went through a long time of this. It's back and forth, hot and cold energy. Um, <clears throat> because that's kind of what karmic relationships are there for. They're not your twin flame. This isn't, like, someone that you're supposed to be with for, like, ever. This is definitely somebody you're supposed to be with, just not forever, right? And so... And, and we all have partners like that in our lives where, you know, it's not a forever kind of deal. Um, and where we, you know, you invest years. And this is oftentimes like a first love kind of situation or like, you, you know, your, your young love situation before your frontal lobe is fully developed kind of situation. I guess I'm so spell, let them stay. Um, but... Yeah, and, and so we make these connections when we're pretty young, um, and our, our frontal lobe isn't fully developed, right? And so we go through our formative years in these connections, usually. Um, and that's really where we learn about, like, our love language and how other people either compliment or... confuse our love language right and it's you know there's not like a wrong love language oh, sorry I just got off work I gotta do the stretches um there's not like a wrong a wrong way to like have a love language right it, it's it's a language right somebody's bound to understand it somebody's bound to speak the same language it's just that you were caught up with somebody for a very long time that did not speak your language. So it was like, it was like y'all were trying to talk through walkie talkies, right? And I use this, I use this analogy a lot because I feel like it's pretty good. Yes, I busted out my wand for the full moon. I actually, whatever, I'll go into that story about my wand later. Uh, <laughs> first things first. So... Yeah, so, where was the fuck was I? Young love. The karmics, right? The karmics are very turbulent love. It's like, oh yes, the walkie-talkie analogy, yes. So it's like y'all are, are screaming at each other through walkie-talkie, right? And you're like, why can't you hear me? Ah! <laughs> you know, and it's like you're trying to be understood. You're trying... To be comprehended right and the thing is is that y'all can scream into those walkie talkies until you're blue in the face before you realize that you guys are on the wrong channel right you can't even hear you're not on the same frequency you have to be on the same frequency to be like heard and comprehended um understood so there's like definitely this energy of like a lack of understanding between two people and uh, a lack of maturity on this feminine's part. I mean, I'd say on both parts there's a lack of maturity, but I feel like the masculine was more like, I have to work, I have to do these things. You know, I do see a little debauchery, I do see a little indulgence and lying, you know, typical things. 
Um, however, it does look like the masculine kind of like woke up to the fact that this wasn't the right feminine, right? Um, now with the death card in reverse, you're in the rebirth from this. This is already, this is a cycle that's already ended. It's already found its completion. And tonight is the full moon in Scorpio and the death card is Scorpio energy, right? And so this is your rebirth energy. This is like coming back to life after feeling like defeated, right? You could be emotionally coming back after that. Um, with the Knight of Swords in reverse, I feel this energy of no longer investing that energy and that time into a connection that feels dead, right? Um, like you're not beating a dead horse. And with the Four of Pentacles, very similar to this King of Pentacles energy, very Earth energy. Um, but it's like really focusing on what you do have, right? And focusing on what you can create for yourself and what you can grow for yourself, um, for the long term. For the long run. Okay, well, here you are building a foundation, right? Fours are all about foundations and you got the four pentacles here. And Four of Pentacles is kind of a lonely energy. It's like building a foundation on your own. But also this is like becoming very like uh, responsible in terms of like budgeting and, you know, um, being a little bit more mindful of, of your spending. Because you have plans, right? And you want to like retire or travel or something, right? But... It does feel like you're you're investing in yourself at this time, which I would never advise against. <laughs> right? I think investing in yourself is always a good idea, um, no matter where you're at in life. You know, I don't give a fuck if it's your last ten dollars. If it's an investment towards something that could multiply that, right? Then, then it's an an investment in the right direction. Uh, I feel like I should say, though, I'm not talking about gambling, right? <laughs> like, investing in yourself is not the same as gambling, right? I'm not talking stock markets and things like that. I mean, literally investing in what you're passionate about. Um, Alright, so let's move in towards you in the future. Whatever the fuck it is, it's moving fast. <laughs> uh, we have Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands is very fast moving. That's a minor arcana chariot card, right? Something is moving fast. Um, what is it? <laughs> Hold on. I'm coming. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Probably literally. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um... So, temperance, divine timing, God, there's not a term that I've hated and loved more, I think, honestly, than divine timing, oh my gosh, it's, I mean, as an Aquarius, you don't want to fucking hear that, right, you don't want to hear, everything happens in the right time, it's like, fuck time, time ain't real, shit happens in the right frequency right so it's not so much about divine timing as it is about divine alignment um we have the king of cups you can't lie about your feelings <laughs> <laughs> so okay so very quickly right which is in in interesting, with the Eight of Wands being very fast energy, but with the Temperance also being very patient energy. It's like your patience makes something move faster, uh, which is funny, right? Because, like, you know when you're, like, in a hurry to, like, get out the door or something, and then you feel like, you know, your bags get caught on door handles, and you, like, fall, and you make a huge mess, and you have to clean it up, and, like... 
you know, everything goes wrong because you're in a hurry to get out the door. But if it was like a normal day where you weren't in a fucking hurry and you were just taking your, your time and just like, you know, doing whatever, then it's like something happens a lot faster. That's, that's kind of the energy that I'm feeling. Like, because, because you're allowing something to happen according to its right time, right? Or you're being patient with something. You're not... Like, it's like that long haul kind of energy, uh, especially with the King of Cups, right? This is coming from a place of deep maturity and deep love and feelings and... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but, like, yeah, the King of Cups, he's on top of his emotions. Water and, and tarot represents um, emotions, right? And if you notice, he's on top of his emotions. And in temperance, he's dipping his toes in the emotions, right? He's... He's exploring, and then in the full card, he's jumping head first into those emotions, right? And it's like, it's uh, very interesting how this plays out. King of Cups is a king of love, right? Um, this is really mature energy, though, with the Cups and the Temperance, right? Because this is somebody who's also very mild-tempered, right? This isn't, like, the kind of person that's going to, like or whomever I'm reading for, or the energy that you're dealing with, right? The temperance energy is very, um, it's the earth angel, which is funny because the devil just came out in reverse. Um, it's the earth angel, right? And after having left the toxic stuff behind, um, very even-tempered, very balanced, very like, you know, that Sagittarius energy. You got a lot of fire energy showing up in your reading dog. Um, the devil in reverse too, I'm seeing kind of letting go of toxicities, you know, whether that's addiction, obsession, possession, <laughs> um, you know, like whatever the case. There's, like, this energy of letting go of something that's very, like, not good for you. Okay. And I feel like whatever it is that you're, you're in your feelings about is kind of, like, helping. I don't want to say you're in your feelings. You're dipping your toes in your feelings about. <laughs> uh, what is it? We have the Emperor, find masculine. This is you kind of stepping up to the plate, dog. This is you showing up and being like, you know what, I'm actually ready for this role, right? You're, um, it's funny because, like, the Divine Feminine is in your, is like the first energy out, right? Which is typically who I'm reading for, but I feel like I'm reading for the masculine in this because of the way that the cards are laying out, really. Like, I see that you've dealt with a toxic feminine. That's not quite a divine feminine. It's like a karmic feminine, right? Um, and you're showing up as a divine masculine, you know, with all the, all the masculines kind of in the upright here. Um, it's like you got your shit together. Now you're at a crossroads. Now you're at a crossroads. You're like, all right, I, I done did all this. Now I'm... Um, with the two of wands, it's kind of like figuring out which direction to go from here, right? With the world in reverse, I see you. You're like, you already shut something out, right? And I, I feel like I keep reiterating that, that something's been shut out. But I feel like that's a big part of this energy, Ace of Cups is a new beginning, right? It's a new beginning in love. Um, it's also, Ace of Aces are one, right? So I feel like this all starts with you filling your own cup, right? This starts with your own love of yourself. I 
juicy, like. <laughs> Nine of Wands in reverse. That's heavy. It's heavy because it's not heavy, <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's heavy because it once was heavy. Right? Nine of Wands is like the wounded warrior, somebody who creates like a self-imposed prison to protect themselves from being hurt, right? With the nine of wands being in reverse, this is the energy of letting the walls down. Um, allowing yourself to be a bit vulnerable, little in your feelings. About what? Whatever it is, it's giving you anxiety. Nine of Swords, you're all up in your head about this. You're overthinking it a lot, right? Two of Swords, this is like, it's very guarded, but with the Nine of Wands, that's in reverse it's like also like bringing down the walls and also this could be the energy of who you're dealing with could be very guarded and you could be like like beating yourself up like how the fuck <laughs> do i get through this right this person's hella fucking guarded right with the justice in reverse labor energy showing up this is like Feel like it's throwing off your balance a bit right with the strength card uh leo energy showing up i feel like you're required to like really tap into your inner strength and your inner strength comes from your maturity and your thoughtful responses and your resilience it also talks about restraint right like there's a lot of strength in restraint the High Priestess, Pisces energy, tells me, though, that you're following your intuition, right? You're allowing yourself to be guided. Um, very, very nice. <laughs> uh, we have the Wheel of Fortune here showing up. Uh, something's working out in your favor. It's kind of being vague on what it is, right? But it's definitely something that's awakening you. Um, something that you're in your feelings about for show with the King of Cups, Ace of Cups. I feel like it's in regards to a new connection, um, or a new cycle. Uh, but I feel like it's also being intentionally vague and I don't like to pry. So I'm going to grab some Kali cards and I'm just going to. Let the reading be intentionally vague because it's, I mean, it's saying like if you trust your intuition, right? And if you, if you stay on the path that feels right for you, right? Um, you know, like do what you feel intuitively is right to do. If you feel like right now it's the time to let your walls down a bit, then it's time to let your walls down a bit. If it's, you know, if it's... Time to, you know, have restraint, then it's time to have restraint. If it's time to be a little bit, you know, whatever, you know, right? Like you're intuitively guided. You're very, you're not, you're not a fool, <laughs> okay? I mean, the fool card is showing up, but I don't think that you're foolish. Um, the fool card shows up to let us know that you're taking a leap of faith, right? You're trusting the divine to guide you. Same with the High Priestess. There's a lot of trust here. Um, so why is Justice in reverse, though? The only way that that would make sense is if I'm talking to a Libra. Let me see. Why is this here?
don't want me to know. Yeah, the moon in reverse. <laughs> There's something like yet to be seen, right? Or I feel like there's this energy of like waiting for, you know, with the six of wands in reverse, I feel like somebody's feeling like under acknowledged or like, um, yeah, like not seen, which is interesting because they are, right? Um, they're actually seen a lot. This is like a heavy energy, but it's like somebody doesn't feel seen. So maybe it's your own guardedness that makes um, you kind of feel a sense of restraint and a connection. Um, with the Five of Pentacles in reverse, it's, it's surrounding this energy of not wanting to feel lack or not wanting to lose something, right? Um, with the Page of Swords, <laughs> um, like I said, you could be a Libra, right? All that Swords energy, air, um, but with the Page of Swords here... such guarded energy right and there's also this energy of like there could be jealousy under the surface here there's like yeah there could be jealousy under the surface I'm not gonna pry too hard because I feel like it's intentionally like being vague and that's fine. <clears throat> Kodka. A predestined series of events is due to occur according to divine timing. What did I tell you about that temperance card? Uh, this has been orchestrated at a higher level to integrate the paths of people with whom you have soul contracts in this lifetime. Trust in the doors that close just as much as in the doors that open for you as a result. So yeah, that's pretty much what I have for you. I hope this was helpful. Namaste. I love you guys and I will see you later.